Hi, my name is Zan Jones. I'm going to be taking you through the steps I use to make this kinetic sculpture. If you want more information, it's available at zanjones.com. The top portion is fused glass, but you can always cut the uh, jack-in-the-box out of a steel plate and paint it, so there's other options. I do want to point out that the vertical portion is kind of kept in a slender profile, so the box at the bottom is not square, it's actually a flat rectangular shape. And then the spring portion is actually ellipse, it's not circular. I try to do that too, so that it doesn't cause any problems with the vertical stand. So let's go ahead and get started in making the uh, spring portion of the jack-in-the-box. The jack-in-the-box consists of a 3H inch diameter steel rod. I'm bending it around the two 1 inch diameter pipes that I tack welded together. And I'm going to be using an oxycetylene torch to bend it around the pipes. I chose the two pipes because as you bend that hot steel rod around those two pipes, when everything cools down, that 3 8 inch steel rod is going to tighten up around wherever you bend it. And so you need to have some way to disassemble whatever you bent that rod around. And by having those two pipes tack welded together, I can just grind the welds out and disassemble it. And once you get the thing disassembled, you will have to take that 3 8 inch steel rod and expand it out. And I basically use the vise and pry bar to get it expanded to expand it out. It's a little bit difficult, but after the fact, I am still glad I used the 3 8 inch steel rod because it's a lot sturdier. The quarter inch would have been easier to work with, but later on when I'm bending things, I'm just glad that I have the 3 8 because it holds its shape and I don't have to worry about constantly rebending because I bent it as I was working on something else. To finish welding it, I did have to do some modifications. Up from the top, I had to bend this down a little bit because when it was swinging back and forth, it was go so far and then it would hit here. And so basically, I took the torch and heated it up and bent it down. When you start welding these things, uh, you will have to do some modifications. One thing that's important is to the horizontal rod here, make sure you weld on the other side because if you were to weld it the other way around, you're not going to have the clearance here. It would definitely get in the way when it starts swinging. Well, through trial and error process, I think I'm going to go with the weight of three vice grips for the top. Uh, it seems like I like the way this, the radius swings, and it seems a little bit more stable than I'm going to have one vice grip up there. And uh, the next thing to do is just basically get a scale out, weigh the three uh, three vice grips, then weigh the piece of fused glass, and then subtract it, and that would tell me the way the uh, steel plate that I need to have up here is the back of the plate. And you know, if I have to go with a quarter inch plate, I'll go with a quarter inch plate. Uh, but it's a trial and, error, trial and error process, so just give it a try until you get something that you're happy with. I ended up using a quarter inch plate for part of the counter weight for the top portion. That quarter inch plate also provides the support for the fused glass. Attach the fused glass to that quarter inch plate using silicone. And the joint, you want to actually leave a little bit of gap. That will allow the two mediums to expand and contract differently without actually breaking that glue joint. That's one of the reasons why I don't use epoxy is, is epoxy is very rigid, so the glass and the steel have a different coefficient of thermal expansion, and you have a potential of actually breaking the joint between the two. And so with the silicone, I've had pretty good luck if you leave a little bit of gap, so it will allow it to expand and contract differently. This video is a brief overview of what I did making this uh, kinetic sculpture. There's more additional information at my website, www.zanjones.com.